Hi there. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and welcome to this month's free webinar, free first Tuesday webinar. And I'm very, very excited. <laughs> I'm very happy uh, because I've got Diana John here. Hello. <laughs> Our resident TCM expert. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> no, she's, she's renowned for her knowledge of TCM. Anyway, so we're going to do the webinar together. Um, so if you'd just like to say hi, where you're from, we've got from Spain, from Vienna, two people from Spain. That's great. Yeah, we've got, uh, I think we had about three or 400 people sign up. So if you're watching this as a recording, welcome to the recording. Absolutely. Yep. If you'd just like to say hi in the chat and get to know each other and we'll uh, we'll carry on with the, uh, with the webinar. Okay, so basically the whole theme of the webinar is to basically share our love of TCM, isn't it? It is. So many Shiatsu students say, oh, TCM, I don't understand. It's so difficult. It's I just want to do Zen Shiatsu. But we love Chinese medicine and it's the enriching power that it gives to our work. So we want to share that. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, we've got some practical exercises for you later on as well. And we've got some big news items at the end. So hang on with us. We Hang on in with us and we'll let you know some very exciting things coming up um, this autumn at uh, New Energy Work. OK, cool. So let's continue with the slides. Um, so we thought we'd think a little bit about why TCM is a good idea for Shiatsu. Um, we're going to do an exercise with you on the vital substances. So you need to have a pen and paper ready if you can do that. We've got ours right here ready for the exercise. Um, we're also going to look at Masanaga um, and how his work was based on a foundation of TCM. And then you've got some other material, haven't you, from Ted Capture? Yeah. Um, the other thing that we've been talking about in the Shiatsu College recently is how TCM is a bit of a misnomer because traditional Chinese medicine, um, that term comes from actually the 20th century post-war. But really, our main sources in here in our world, in the Shiatsu College, are Giovanni Macioccia and Ted Kapchuk, who uh, researched way back into the much earlier sources of Chinese medicine, and um, which include much more of the spiritual aspects. Right. And yeah. that's where actually Masanaga's interest as well extended in his studies. Yes. He yes. included those early versions of Chinese medicine. So it's not a modern post-war clinical <clears throat> um, abbreviated version. It's the rich, traditional, classical Chinese medicine that we're interested in with all its spiritual aspects. Yeah. Good, and we'd like to share with you some of that material um, because it takes it away from the pathology then. Yeah, I exactly. mean, TCM is great, great actually for understanding pathology, but it's also, it does give you um, more of a, uh, like a positive model, doesn't it, of all the positive aspects Absolutely. of life. Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to be looking at also at how we can understand some of the symptoms in TCM. And then, uh, yeah, as I said before, we've got some big news items coming up as well at the end. <laughs> So, right, so first of all, why don't we find out a little bit about you? We've got um, nearly 100 people attending, we've got people joining all the time. So let's find out how you would assess your knowledge of TCM. So I'm going to launch a poll. If you've done a webinar before, you'll know what that's all about. Um, we'd like to know how you assess your knowledge of TCM. So we've got no TCM, basic, intermediate, advanced, and expert. So that would give us an idea of your general level of confidence and, and knowledge. Oh, okay, so we've got a few people who have no TCM whatsoever. But the majority have a basic and intermediate uh, knowledge, which is interesting, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. I, I love there are two experts. Woohoo! Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Any more? Anyone would like to vote? Any more people would like to vote? I think we've pretty much got the idea. So, yeah, we've got 57. The vast majority of you have got basic or intermediate level knowledge. Great. So the next thing we thought we'd ask is, do you actually use it? Do you use TCM when you're doing shiatsu? So 
how about this let's see yep so do you use tcm knowledge never sometimes often or very often so we're just watching the numbers ticking up as and we vote yep. and we've got 82 percent voted and it looks like about half you sometimes use tcm uh about 25 percent often and actually 21 percent very often so we've got the vast majority of people yeah. are using tcm in some in some Great. respects so that's really really good okay so we've got a very good basis there cool okay so why would we want to use tcm well there's a question Well, like I just said, uh, I mean, the Masanaga system is brilliant, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is, from a practical point of view. From what a you're practical to do. and from, um, from an energetic perspective, if you like. Mm -hmm. But actually, what were his sources? And there were, he had a huge range of sources to his own uh, background, his family background in Shiatsu, so his clinical practice. Yeah. His mother was a shiatsu practitioner and all of that. Yes. But also he was an academic and a professor of psychology. Yes. So he drew on that. But as I said earlier, he also researched back into the early Chinese medicine texts. Yes. That included all the spiritual aspects of the organs and so on. Yes. And one of the wonderful things about the Zen system is that distillation of all that huge amount of background information he was a yeah. great brain wasn't he he was yeah yeah distilled down into those tiny elegant phrases that we know by heart and resonate yeah. with yes so yes. intake of key and elimination or whatever it is yes that's right but if you know a bit more of your chinese medicine history then you get so much more resonance yes yeah, that's one of the things I love it for that uh, we've you've titled ancient wisdom. wisdom yes. yes, it definitely also deepens our knowledge, like you said, where the Zen Shiatsu system comes from. It's also very useful when you're dealing with people who have varied pathologies because you've got a lot more sources to, yeah. to fall back on. And certainly in the Shiatsu Center next door, we've got a huge library. A lot of it is TCM books and we do use it all the time. Yep. We get difficult cases and we want to look things up. And of course, the other ma massive thing, I think, is action of points here and i'm not talking about intellectual you know this mm. does that i'm talking about energetics mm. you know yeah, yeah. um understanding the energetics of points um really really helps and the um the thing about that is is that what we've found is that the energy work will start to converge with the theory so what happens after a while is scanning tuning into the energy field you'll start to pick up uh, vibrational information which you can match and which can be explained and correlated mm -hmm. with uh, TCM theory and that kind of puts us in the same place that all those people thousands of years ago who discovered all these things because it is an energetic system and a metaphoric and energetic system um, yeah and one of the things that we do all the time is work on our alignment and release and on our our own personal development learning to quieten our mind to center mm -hmm to release the spine, to widen our key field, widen our awareness, align our chakras, all of that stuff, to put us in the place, as you say, where those ancient gifted Chinese practitioners from yes. yesteryear, when they were finding out where points were, yeah, and what absolutely. they did, absolutely, and how yeah. they felt. Yes, it's a similar process, and what they it? did as well. What exactly. the action of the point—that's what I meant. What they did, yes, exactly. Yes, they did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's it. So um, we got some interesting information here. So okay, so we just made up a, a little table of some of the correlations between Zen Shiatsu and TCM. Um, so one of the most basic things in the theory, and we've got another slide after this, is the meridian expressions and the Zhang Fu functions, because. The basic Zen, uh, Zen Shiatsu functions like intake of key, mm -hmm. you know, gathering food, nurturing, uh, emotional center, getting ready to run, even though it's got a, a modern interpretation in the endocrine system, yeah. uh, protecting the body and which way to turn. All of those are essentially distillations of the Zhang Fu functions, aren't they? 
exactly. And that's why I love that we learn though where they come from in a way, because yeah. it, I think it really deepens your resonance. So, you know, when you take a deep breath and yawn, breathe in, taking in and letting go, you know, yeah, all of that stuff. If you know the Zhang Fu functions of the lung yeah. that include housing the corporeal soul, so issues of mortality, and when we breathe in, we're not breathing out, living in the moment, all of those things. Yes, yes. It really enriches our the simple Masanaga functions and expression. It does, yeah. yeah. And the other thing that I really like about it, I think it's very practical, is the Zhangfu interactions, because yeah. that's not really in the Masanaga system. No. And so things like the fact that the lungs descend the key, the kidneys grasp the key from the lungs, that, that yeah. kind of thing, yeah. those interactions are very useful. And then we've got the life cycle of, life cycle of the amoeba. I think we've got a slide for that in a minute. Um, I think that's really interesting that Masanaga was aware of that and he based his kind of theory on that because that comes directly from the Chinese clock. Well, I think that was his attempt to kind of make sense of the Chinese clock from what I understood. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, here's this Chinese clock. What's it really about? Yes. And so then he used the single cell organism as his way of um, demonstrating the movement of key through the cycle. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So he's kind of links it with very early life forms yeah. and yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and the times. I mean, he was obviously aware of, um, we'll, get, we'll talk about that in a minute, about the six divisions, uh, which is coming up a little bit later. So Kyonjitsu, you see, that's another interesting thing, because if you look back at earlier forms of Shiatsu, like the Namakoshi system, it doesn't really have the equivalent of Kyonjitsu in it. Um, that was developed later on. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see Kyon Jitsu is essentially again as a application of yin and yang into the body. And Absolutely. A practical yeah, yeah, yeah. application of it. Yeah. And then we've got the Hara diagnosis. I mean, that's a very Japanese thing, but that links again back to earlier forms. Um, and then the other thing that I find really interesting is Masanaga's meridian extensions, because, you know, the, the, the bane of a lot of second year students' life, you know, oh my God, I've just learned the classical meridians, now I've got another whole load of meridians to learn, and all that kind of thing. Um, but if you look closely, if you understand the six divisions, and Masanaka was definitely aware of the six divisions, as we'll see later with the next slide, um, you can actually, and this actually links very much with Dan Keown's work as well. If you were on the webinar with Dan Keown a few months back, um, you'll know that he was very heavily influenced with the uh, by the six divisions and how they link to embryology. Yep. Um, and if you look carefully at the Zen Shiatsu chart, you'll find that around 75% of the Masnaga meridian locations can be explained by the six divisions. Um, just a simple example, I mean, the liver is on the inside of the leg, on inside of the leg, it's on the inside of the arm. Um, the gallbladder is on the, the outside. Heart protector. Is, it, is in the leg and it is in the arm. Exactly. Sorry, the heart protector there right beside each other. And essentially, so, if you read Dan's book, the heart protector and the liver are essentially the same, they're the same meridian yeah. in a sense, or the same channel. So, And actually, if you've worked with Bill Palmer and movement shiatsu, um, it's again a major interest of his is the pairs in the six divisions. Right, yeah, yeah. So they are highly significant, and I love the 75% of... You just have to take up the position of a teddy bear <laughs> and you can figure out most of the meridian extensions. Great exercise if you're an advanced student or if you haven't done it before, you should do that as a little exercise. Just plot the uh, teddy bear positions. In other words, sim superimpose the channels of the legs onto the arms. And the other thing is, of course, is some don't fit. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the large intestine meridian on the leg, you'd expect that to be near the stomach meridian and actually it's on the back of the leg and the lung channel, which you'd expect to be near the spleen, is actually near the bladder. And it's actually quite an interesting exercise just trying to figure out why, why. why. Yeah. And it's all embedded in TCM, by the way. So yeah. the deeper you get into TCM, the more you can explain these connections. Okay, we've got development of the hara as the center. And then of course, we've got the whole sedation tonification system, which is similar to, in some ways, to some of the Chinese medicine stuff. Um, it's an application of yin and yang or, yeah. you know, stagnation and deficiency and stuff mm. like that. Mm. So there's lots of uh, links there. Okay, and this is a very famous um, diagram, which is one of Masanaga's 
many diagrams that he developed in the 1970s uh, for his famous Ohashi workshops. And um, that was when he came over to New York and he presented uh, three workshops over three years with huge classes. Um, and he did communicate a lot of his work. Um, the reason I know that is because my teacher, Pauline Sasaki, was there. She was uh, his assistant. And um, I've also got a collection of the handouts from those workshops. This is one of them, which I found in Pauline's filing cabinet when I was there, <laughs> when I was being apprenticed, which I've copied. And this is probably one of the most famous. And it clearly shows uh, the relationship between the six divisions. You can see the six divisions on the outside. Um, and then you've got um, the arm leg, arm leg uh, sequence, obviously, as you go through. And then if you go one um, layer in, you'll see the meridian names. And then underneath that, a bit nearer the middle, you'll see Masnaga's meridian expressions, as which we've just uh, also just discussed, are based on the uh, Zangfu functions. They're basically distillations of the Zangfu functions. And then in the right in the inside, you've got the order of the life cycle, which is what Diana was mm. talking about, basic movements, Chinese clock. Yep. movements of the, um, the amoeba. Yep. amoeba. So interest, all interesting stuff. OK, Natya says, I studied the Zen Masnaga style in Shiatsu and always apply the TCM principles to my Shiatsu. Yeah, yeah, cool, good. OK, so here we go. OK, time for an energy work exercise. OK, so Diana and I are going to do it. We're going to talk you through it. Here we are. Thank OK. Um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do two exercises. We're going to talk you through. I'm going to do it with you as well. I'm going to close my eyes and do it with you. You need a piece of paper if you can and a pencil. Um, we're going to take you into like an energy work meditation. And then we're going to see if you can figure out which of the vital substances we uh, have just experienced, okay? Um, and we'll do it with a poll. So we've got two polls prepared, and we'll just see if you can get the, the right answer, okay? So let's start off with uh, the first one. And we're going to just sit and relax, okay? You can close your eyes. And then we're going to tune into our own energy field. So you just want to go into your alignment, relax uh, your shoulders, relax your hips, float your head up, and then relax your rib cage front and back. Opening up the joints in your arms and in your legs. And then we're just going to quieten down our energy. So we've got a nice clear space that we can explore one of the vital substances. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to visualize like a tube of energy. And it's gonna to connect to our back around the center of the lumbar area and that tube goes backwards. Okay, so you're going to close your eyes and imagine a tube. And that tube contains the energy of your ancestors. So you can think of your parents, their energy, and then your grandparents. And you can go back further, thinking of that tube of energy. And just keep extending back in your mind, back through the generations. And you can go back further, back further to early human development. And then back through evolution. And then back further right to the very beginning of life. Can you imagine that dynamic of life, that energy of life going down that tube into your lower back and into your whole energy. 
Okay, and then you can imagine the tube at the front of your body from your hara going forwards. And that tube is the future. That's your energy that you're putting into the future. Your creativity, everything that you create in your life in the future. Okay, so now we're going to really relax and feel as if we're part of that long tube of energy. Okay, now if you take both your hands, you place one hand over the other and you place one palm just below your navel around CV6, CV4. Relax your shoulders. And now see if you can access that tube, all that tube of energy behind you through your palm. So you're scanning through your abdomen into your back and then into that energy of the tube. Okay, and then with your um, intention or with your mind thinking through the back of your hand into the future tube. Okay, very good. And then we can bring our hands up into the prayer position just to finish off. And then just rub your hands, bring your awareness back into your energy. Shake your hands up. Okay, and then we're just going to draw or write down your experience of the first exercise. There are going to be two. So if you want to draw a line here and have one and two, okay. And then you just draw a picture of that picture of that experience and then we're going to test your knowledge of TCM by getting you to see if you can figure out which of the vital substances we were tuning into just then so I'm just going to launch that poll uh, when you're ready Okay, so when you've done your drawing, I'll launch the poll. Okay, so which of these vital substances did we just experience? Blood, Shen, Qi, Jing, or body fluids? <laughs> oh. Okay. Got a bit of a range. In fact, it would be worth discussing them. Discussing them. Okay, anyone else want to, we're still drawing a picture. Anyone else want to vote? Okay, very good. Okay, well, it's also a slight test of my meditation, isn't it? How effective it is. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> yeah, I hope it worked. Uh, yeah, okay, so most of you, the vast majority, 75% of you voted for Jing, and that's what I was trying to evoke. But it's interesting, though, to think how that is linked, because the kidney energy itself is fueled by the jing. So in a, yep. in a sense, and the kidney energy is the root of all yin and yang in the body, yep. including the ki. Yep. So if you said ki, then probably what you tuned into was probably tuned into kidney ki. Yeah, and the yang aspect of the kidney perhaps. Yang as aspect of the yeah. kidney, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Also, the kidney, the lower hara is very much connected with the body fluids. And that's the yin aspect of the kidneys, which again kind of comes from the jing. So if you if you chose body fluids, you probably tuned into the yin aspect of the kidney energy, I reckon. Yeah. Imagine. And after all, jing is described as a precious fluid. That's true. Yeah. Yes. So it, it has that yin wet quality on some yes. level. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now let's do the second one, shall we? And see if you see what, how you get that. I'll just hide this. This is fun. <laughs> And this, these exercises, by the way, they came from the postgrad course, the postgrad course that we formed with the Shiatsu College in, started in 1991. That was with Paul Lumbo, Carola Beresford Cook, uh, Dinah, Nicola, Pooley, and myself. And we evolved a whole system um, of how to experience um, TCM. So 
you're probably used to TCM coming packed a bit like this, a big book. Um, but our emphasis is, um, or the second edition, <laughs> even, even bigger, bigger book, <laughs> Giovanni. <laughs> You're probably used to seeing it like that. But actually, what we really believe is that it's more of an energy awareness thing. Absolutely. And yeah. That's one of the aspects of studying Chinese medicine that is so enriching, is that if you can make it experiential for your students, for yourself, then you can bring it into your practical shiatsu in a real way rather than just with that um, scholar hat on and turning to your books. It's, yes. it's a living thing. It's not a dry thing. No, That's exactly. what's such a delight in it. Yeah, exactly. OK, ready for the second exercise? Oh, I'm sorry, Maria, there's no connection in Athens. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. OK. You'll get, right. the, you'll get the recording, the recording. later. Yes, yeah. yeah. OK, so um, do you want to do another one more? We'll just do one more. Oh. Katerina is connected. Katerina is connected, connected in Athens, so maybe it's just local. <laughs> okay, try this one. Okay, so again, we're going to go into our alignment. And center our energy again. We just more quickly go into a neutral space. And we're going to just calm our energy down by relaxing and calming and quietening our energy down. Okay, so this time we're going to center our awareness around CV17 or the heart chakra or the heart area. Okay. And what we're going to do is tune into that area and then imagine that we are tuning in and becoming conscious from that area, first of all, of our own body, to become conscious of our own body. And then conscious of anyone near you. So we're connecting, I'm connecting with Diana now. And if you're in a family house or if you're in a building with lots of people, I just want you to become aware of their being aware of their consciousness. Okay, and then we're going to spread that consciousness or awareness out to the whole street that you're living in, or the whole area that you're in. and then spread it out into the whole region or the town or city that you're in. And then imagine that consciousness or awareness spreading out into the whole country that you're in. Okay, and now we're going, because we've got people from all around the world on this webinar, we're just going to open up the consciousness and connect with all the people on the webinar right around the world. Just imagine you've got that direct connection through this heart center here. And it's aware, it's a feeling of connection, empathy, and consciousness that we're experiencing. Hey, very good. There's another way of connecting, apart from using the internet. <laughs> okay, so now we'll just place our hands. You can place your hands just over the heart chakra here. Just center yourself back into your own awareness of your body. Open your eyes. And then, do you want to draw a contrasting picture in part two, in the second place? So, Going to start off with a picture of the heart. Okay, just a simple drawing. You can write a few things that you felt as well. Um, and I'll get the next poll ready for the second one. Okay, ready? I'm going to launch the second poll. 
So which of the vital substances do you think we um, we experienced with this exercise? Let's see. Oh, oh, there's some interesting ones here. Look, very good. <laughs> very good. Anyone else want to uh, vote? We've got 63% of everyone voted. Very good. Okay, look, 71%. And look, we've got the vast majority, 80% said Shen. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> it works better with the eyes open, actually. If you're doing it in a group, it works better. Because you're on your own, I decided uh -huh. to keep the eyes closed uh -huh. because the uh, Shen reflects in the, in course, the eyes. Yes, yeah. yes. So when I'm doing it in class, I usually get everyone to open that. Once I've got this opened up, the consciousness, I, op I get them to open up their peripheral vision and connect with the eyes. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't do that. Okay, what was the next most popular one? Well, it was blood. Okay. Yeah, it's housed in the heart. Yeah, the blood is housed in the heart. And also, interestingly enough, the Shen is rooted in the heart blood. So if you've got in touch with the blood, what you've done there is you've got in touch with the heart blood. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It makes total sense, yeah. Um, the, the, the thing that makes it particular uh, to the Shen is the consciousness thing, because that's the thing about the yeah. consciousness, the awareness expanding, okay? So blood, and the next most popular one is key, okay? Well, that's because key is everywhere. I mean, you've got heart key. Yeah. Everything is key, so that's understandable. Yeah. Um, body fluids, that's, again, part of the blood. And jing, well, the, it's interesting. I, I'd like to mention that because the jing, the connection between the shen and the jing is really, really important. So I noticed that quite a few people mentioned shen in the last exercise, right. in the first exercise. Um, and the, a really good image that you sometimes see is um, a candle or an oil lamp, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have an oil lamp. That oil is the jing. It's like a precious fluid. And the flame is the fat, is the shen. shen. Yeah. And actually, Carola always tells she had a Chinese boyfriend at one time, and he told her that the Chinese themselves almost never say Jing. They say Jing Shen. Oh, really? Yeah. That's All right. the phrase that they always use, Jing Shen. All right. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. They don't separate them. So you can't have one without the other. Is no. Because yeah. actually you can't because that is yeah. fun. It's yeah. the foundation of consciousness, isn't yeah. it? It exactly. is actually the essence of yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. It's life. It's life. You can't have one without the other. No. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jing Shen. Yeah. And from a clinical point of view, that's so useful. I mean, yeah. It's really one of the most, especially with working with trauma. It's or exactly any... what I was going to say, yeah. the fire water thing that, you know, we did a, you did a recently a lot online course on stress and trauma. And that yes. was one of the major patterns that we were looking at. Wasn't it was, it? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's really right. Really significant and Thanks. really significant in practice, isn't it? Totally, yeah. I mean, you do things like very simple techniques, like checking the lower abdominal breathing for the mm -hmm. connection with the jing, um, connecting it with the heart center, you know, techniques like that. Um, yeah. And also, just a little note here, <laughs> that kidney and the heart are in the same division as well. I'm yes. just thinking exactly the same, same because yeah. they're right beside each other, yeah. in the leg and in the arm. Yeah, yeah. in Masanaka, yeah. 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 yeah, brilliant. Okay, so thank you very much. You all did excellent. <laughs> really good. <laughs> and um, I noticed in the chat earlier, and I didn't yeah. see many because I, I'm having trouble with glasses on and off. <laughs> But I did notice there were people from Canada and people from Australia. And so that um, spreading our consciousness out around the world was dramatic and exciting. Yes, I enjoyed that. Yes. Yes. It was like, whoa, okay. I thought it was interesting because it, it opened up generally when I was talking about cities and countries. Yeah. But when I said the webinar, it kind of got a lot more focused, didn't yeah. it? The yeah. resonance got more focused around the, yeah. um, around the globe. Yes. <laughs> oh, look, this is interesting post from... Um, Sarah, look, in Qigong, women draw up Jing into the chest and the breast to store the Jing passed onto the breast, breast of the baby. Babies. Ooh, nice, yeah. Because that's the foundation of postnatal key. Yeah. So, fantastic. Excellent. So, if you've got any comments or anything you want to share about the exercise or um, anything you experienced, then you can always just put it in the chat. Or if you've got any questions as well, just put it on the chat and we'll be very happy to, to read it out and... Uh, um we'll do it. One. yeah okay so just to review the vital substances 
we've got the building blocks of TCM. Well, that's basically, that's in fact, again, that's Carola's phrase oh, is it? to describe the vital substances. What are they? Yeah. So when people are going, oh, TCM, it's so hard. Okay, start with the building blocks, what we are made of. Right, yes, yeah. They are, everything in the universe is made of key. Yeah. But in the body, it's subdivided into these five vital substances, qi and jing and shen and blood and body fluids. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, of course, my TCM studies, Chinese medicine studies started with the Shiatsu College and with those very teachers you mentioned, Paul and Carola and yes. actually Elise as well, yes. who were all trained as acupuncturists. Right. So yes. there was a root of, of um, study of Chinese medicine from there yes that fed into the whole Shiatsu College syllabus isn't there? there was yeah, yeah. that's right and um what was I going to say yes Carola calls and the building blocks of TCM I'm oh, sorry I'm, 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 I'm going further away I'm getting <laughs> overexcited <laughs> <laughs> leave oh, I'm really <laughs> coming <laughs> yeah um, and Paul Paul used to say that's what I was going to mention that Paul used to say that in a way there are only four because the separation of blood and body fluids is slightly contrived because yes. they're all the wet stuff in the body together. Yeah. But um, blood has a more nourishing quality and it has more of a, a psychological component as well. Right. But it's a slightly, so body fluids on their own, they're seldom separated from blood yeah. in pathology. Hey, look, Mitzi's got an interesting comment. During the second exercise, that was the, sh the Shen exercise, I felt a tingling on kidney one in my right foot. Mm -hmm. Now, that's interesting because kidney one is a really important point. It's um, it's basically the main point that's used to settle the mind and settle any kind of crazy thoughts that are going on and things that are going upwards in the body uh, because it's the, like an earthing point that we use in Qigong mm. um, and it nourishes the yin of the body. It nourishes mm. the calm and the cooling mm. aspect of the body. So it may have been calling out for you. You might have been getting a bit overexcited there. Like we were. Like, <laughs> like we I were. was just now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kidney one, it's really recommended. And that, that's why I would also say that's another thing that I think is so cool about um, TCM. Because I have to say that when I first started studying Shiatsu, I got I started reading the Journal of Chinese Medicine and it just seemed overwhelming. I thought, oh my God, mm. you know, I knew it was interesting and exciting, but I couldn't get into it, you know, mm. it's just too difficult. Um, but actually, you don't need to know that much. You yeah. just need to know the fundamentals, yeah. and then suddenly this whole world opens up. And one of the whole world, which is one of our favorite whole worlds, is in this very big book, which is now an app, um, which is Peter Dedman's book um, on uh, the points. And it, that's another example, because if you read um, these commentaries on the points and you have a basic level of TCM, you could get right into this. It's fascinating. You could translate yeah. it straight into your, directly into your energy yeah. work. It's like yeah. really cool. So, right, good. Let's see what else we've got. Okay, so we've got the Zhang Fu functions. Okay, um, we already mentioned that they uh, link to Masnaka's meridian expressions. Yeah, directly. Okay. And the good thing about them, I think, uh, that adds a little bit more than Masnaka, obviously, Masnaka um, distilled. distilled them. <laughs> so some of the detail was lost in that process. In some ways, they were made more powerful from a clinical point of view yep. because you can. It's quite a simple system. You yeah. can it aids your connection with the energy and stuff. Yeah. Um, but from a clinical point of view, it's useful sometimes to have that just that little bit deeper knowledge, isn't yeah. it? That's what I, um, that's exactly what I was trying to say earlier. I find it's really enriching. Yeah. It strengthens the resonance that you get with a point or a meridian. Yeah. When exactly, you've got yeah. all that source material behind the distilled phrase or you yes. know the energetic yeah. of the expression. Yeah. And you've said here on the slide, Zhang Fu, it's a metaphoric system describing the internal energetics of the body. And when you've basically, it's how things work, isn't it? Yes. So it we've is, got yeah. vital substances. Yes. And that they all interact yeah. through the functions of the organs. Yes. And in a sense, at that stage, what you're looking at is what we're made of and where it is. Yes. And how it works. So we're talking about the anatomy and physiology of the healthy body yes at that exactly. stage yeah that's right yes yeah and then of course when it starts to go wrong you've got all the patterns of disharmony yeah mm -hmm. exactly first and you have the causes of disease like living a life <laughs> and wind and cold and worrying and all of that 
Um, but yes, and then you start looking at patterns after that. But the most amazing thing, I think, and the, the reason that Chinese medicine and Shiatsu is so popular, and because of what it does, is when you think about it, the Shen is a, is a funny thing to call Shen a substance. Yeah, it's the least. Because, I mean, you know, how, uh, consciousness itself is so poorly understood in the West. Yeah. In fact, it's a bit of an embarrassment in materialistic scientific because yeah. they just can't explain it at all. Mm -hmm. And yet the Shen and the Jing, which again is another mystery in a way, yeah. Yeah. Um, they are essential to a description of health in the body, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. It's the quality of consciousness that emanates from the eyes that that very quality that is so difficult to describe in Western medicine is an actual vital substance. It's an actual, considered to be as substantial as blood, which is um, extraordinary when you think about it. It's true. Yeah. My Qigong teacher, Cindy Engel, who yeah. was on a webinar some while back, um, we sometimes, she gets us to do a meditation where she said, she says, um, picture your mind as a substance yeah, and then we um, take time to let it settle into the body, like right, yeah. like snowflakes falling or like ink yeah. in water or whatever. Yeah. But she said, okay, it isn't a substance, but imagine that it is. You know, so it's yes. because of course, in in it is the least material. It's the no. most insubstantial. It is, but, but it's but it's it a concrete like, thing. It is a, a way. thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, and then of course we've got the syndrome. I was just thinking of you know a recent case. I've come. I mean, I can think of hundreds of cases where TCM has just been so useful, you know, and I mean, I can just, I can just think of so many, but I mean, just recently I had a client come in, she's a medical researcher, she's a nurse, she had unexplained pains all up the side of her body, um, terrible pains in the shoulders, her vision was uh, distorted because her eyes wouldn't uh, operate correctly, wow. you know, really serious, and then, I mean, I, treated her and it was just a classic case of liver stagnation you know right. and when I explained it to it it was one of those clients where the liver was uh, resonating on all levels you know okay. what I mean and yeah. ultimately when we hit more the spiritual level what she was doing she didn't feel she felt she bullied at work she wasn't following what she really right. wanted to do you know being obstructed right. that's when she started crying you know and all this emotional release came out right. and it was just so cool in a way to have all those levels you know the spiritual level which we'll go on to in a minute mm. um and uh, the emotions the physical and everything and it's just wonderful when you can just take it straight out of a textbook and just and it can provide so much um reassurance for the client that's one of the things that i really love about it because yeah. I, I use in my dialogue with clients i use references to chinese medicine quite a lot yeah because it's such a great way of taking away the kind of the discomfort around talking about various aspects yes. of their health and it's like you know unexplained pain below the rib cage you know to, it's fascinating for them to understand that in the chinese medicine perspective on it and liver key stagnation often gets stuck there and it's about health emotions and frustration yeah. so on and so on yeah and i had a wonderful case that i told you about in fact before um recently that of um a chap who had bell's palsy you know that uh, one side facial paralysis yeah and of course western medicine doesn't have any explanation you know he's it's just inflammation of the nerve which is just, just unexplained yes, unexplained yeah. totally unexplained yeah. and he couldn't understand it and he was distressed by it you know and he had the problem with the eye and so on and so on yeah and um, from his case study, even the very first time I talked to him, it turned out that he had been bereaved of his mother in the autumn right. in a very distressing way. It's a long story, but it was traumatic. Yeah. And ever since then, he's unable to sleep well. Yeah. Couldn't get to sleep, didn't feel himself, didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. Then his job is a tree surgeon. He's out in... January goes back to work a bit too soon. Huge winds we had in England in January. Yeah. Working along a hedge, wind on one side, developed Bell's palsy. Right. No explanation. So, from our perspective, blood deficiency from the distress around the mother, bereavement, yes. invasion of wind, right. blocking the channels. Yeah. Having an explanation, totally empowering for him. 
yeah cheered him up no end because he was miserable yes great and yeah. of course he made really fast progress using all the points yes for doing exactly yeah, that exactly yeah. and that's the other thing isn't yeah. it when you look in the books and you have points that expel wind that support the shen that you know, nourish what the blood or, yeah, yeah what does that mean well you know you, you can get a really concrete yeah. uh, idea of that by experiencing the vital substances so yeah Time, of course, is whizzing past. Oh, my God. <laughs> it always does. The hour always goes so much, so fast. Um, Where have we got to? Treating symptoms. We just talked about that, haven't yep. we? Working with complexity. It's always useful. Just come in a little bit down. You'll come out of frame again. <laughs> I'm That's pretty soon disappearing. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, vital substances linked with key awareness. And that's one of the most exciting things I think that's happened over the last 30 years is that as we've developed the uh, body scanning and the vibrational level scanning, yep. you know, that's basically sort of dovetailed in with the um, with the deeper knowledge of TCM. Of TCM and exactly. you can link it directly. Yep. And that gives you um, an ability to have direct experience of the energetic action points, which is really cool, I think. You know. That's it, yeah, exactly. Widening your energetic awareness levels yeah. allows you to yes tune in, not just know that this point does such and such, this point does such and such, but feel it happening. Yeah, and, and that's also, what's exciting and, and empowering. Yeah, and also you also can test whether it really is working yes. as well because yeah. they don't always. They, no. It depends on the internal yeah. energetics. Absolutely, it? it makes it all a lot more direct and a lot more fun. So, okay, here we are. We've got a little bit of time. To just quickly look through this, this is some of the most exciting stuff. This is from Ted Kaptrick, isn't it? Some of his later yep. um, work. Yeah. And it's about the virtues. What are the virtues exactly then? Well, the uh, uh, attributes of each of the yin organs mm -hmm. that, again, are uh, positive all right. um, qualities that are um, the aim, if you like, of the of the organ so um for example the um the aim of the will so i'm just sharing, sharing the slides them. if you do want the this table we've just shared the slide so you can download it and you can have a look at it later but um hopefully you can read it on screen yeah sorry yeah so uh, let's just start with just uh i'll just look at one the kidney for example yeah so the spiritual aspect the uh, aspect of spirit that lives in the kidney is the we call, usually call it z yeah apparently it's actually pronounced z. Right. i'll call it z because it sounds nice <laughs> and um, the z is usually translated as will mm -hmm. and um ted capture talks about how there are two aspects to that will the yang will which is what we kind of associate with willpower determination you know making your plan and sticking to it or you know giving up chocolate or whatever it is you know climbing a mountain mm -hmm. willpower yeah but there's also um uh, a yin aspect which is about allowing your destiny to move through you all right oh that's interesting interesting so it links with that uh, jing with exercise that, doesn't it that, that we did earlier yeah. yeah 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 and so yes divine acceptance is my phrase that to characterize that feeling it's like there's some part of you that has to accept the nature of life and your right. your place in that river of life sometimes you know you talk about a tube with yes us, but um the you know the expression the river of life it's like we've each got our place in it haven't we yes yeah yeah and the virtue of the kidney is wisdom you'll see on the right hand side these this list of virtues and um, the aim of the kidneys is to cultivate. So it stores the jing, the essence, and it houses the zi, the will. And naturally, the jing essence declines with age. Yeah. And ideally, the function of the kidneys is to transform that physical jing into non-physical wisdom. Right. That's a great image, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and so even those of us who don't have children, obviously we pass on our jing to our children if we have them. But those of us who don't have children, we pass on our wisdom, ideally, yeah. to any younger people whose lives we connect with as right, we go right. through our own. Yes. So we're still feeding into the river of life, if you like. Yes. And, yeah. the, and the wisdom he describes as 
not knowing lots of stuff. No. That's an attribute of the liver, apparently. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, like organising all the information <laughs> yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, accumulating information. Yeah. But no, it's, um, it's, uh, he said it's a bit like the medieval phrase abiding in faith. It's um, the ability to approach the unknown without fear. Oh, right. Oh, that's an interesting idea. That wisdom. Yes. So and that's how it links with fear in a way. Exactly. A lack of fear, like courage. Yeah. Yes. But it's through like the, wisdom. Exactly. Not through just being reckless. Exactly. Oh, right. I never thought of it like that. Well, he talks about fear and wisdom having the same resonance. Because yes. that's a key word, of course, in Chinese medicine anyway. The early understanding of, of what qi is. Yes. It's not about life energy. That came much later in the 19th century. Yes. And before that, it's all about evoking or precipitating a resonance with chi in the universe. Oh, what chi is? Or chi yes, is. yes. Oh, yeah. I see, yeah. Um, yes. All right. It's like, um, because chi is the ability of one phenomenon to change to another. Right, so it's okay. the possibility inherent in things that they can change. Right, okay. okay. It's that borderline between the yin and the yang right, in okay. the symbol. All right, okay. If you like. Yeah. So possibility of change. Yes. And so when you press a point, so for example, let's say we press stomach 36. Yeah. You're not adding key into the person. No. What you're doing is evoking a possibility of a greater resonance with the key in the universe. Right. Yeah, that makes total sense, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's information really more than anything, isn't yeah. it? That links back yeah. to what we were doing in the scientific basis as well. Yeah. Really, it's information, not It's information, actual not stuff. Energy. No, yeah. no. That's yeah. Right. yeah. And um, so that wisdom that allows us to face the unknown, relationship with what is unknown and unknowable, trust yes. in destiny. destiny yeah. yeah. It's also, it's, of course, the ultimate unknown is death. Right. So in an ideal world, your jing declines yes. naturally with age and your wisdom grows yes. naturally with age. Yeah. So ultimately, you face the final transformation without fear. Wow, that's a fantastic image. <laughs> that's something to work towards. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. That's really brilliant. Yeah. Oh, wow. So then, and there's there's uh, five of those that we can go into more detail. Yeah. We've got loads of, um, look, this is what Lindsay said, I'm finding this as a really lovely way for me to do a little self-reflection by listening to the details of TCM. That's yeah. a really nice comment, yeah, because yeah. it is, it's all to do with very deep spiritual stuff, isn't Absolutely. it, really? Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and people I think... get st stuck on, you know, its pulses and its tongues and its patterns of disease, but actually there's this whole richness behind it that is... Um, inspiring and empowering for us and for our shiatsu practice and for our clients and you know when i was being apprenticed by pauline she taught me this thing that she she got from masnaga she didn't know what it was but it, what, it, what it was was actually the spiritual aspects of the okay. i found out later when i started with carola and paul i thought i know what this is masnaga taught this to pauline it's the spiritual aspects okay and masnaga himself said when towards the end of his life that if he had someone asked him do you have any regrets and he said I wish I'd spent more of my life working on the soul yeah. rather than on the body. Yeah. So that yeah. was a sort of his wisdom that yeah. came through in yeah, the yeah, end, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, look at the time has just flown past. It always does on these webinars. Um, so we let's uh, just review. We've discussed why we think TCM is so exciting. We love it so much. It gives depth to Masnaga um, because that's where Masnaga got it from. And in fact, my view is that Masnaga is part of TCM. I mean, it's an evolving yeah. system, isn't it? Yeah um it's yeah, always been, it, it usually it? gets taught in schools as a separate topic and that's yeah. that's in a way what we're trying to change um you know yes. a, a challenge yes yeah. because actually it's one continuum yes and there's no need to separate it out and there's no need to make one exciting and one dull <laughs> i think a lot of it is because a lot of the teachers are acupuncturists they're not energy workers and so it gets taught in a bit of a theoretical way yeah. in some schools anyway now they've got the vital assumptions, we've experienced those, talked about those, the Zhang Fu functions and how they link to Masnaga. And mm -hmm. we've just talked a little bit about symptoms and the use of points in TCM. So it's just, um, are there any books you would recommend? Well, what yes. would you say? Yeah, I'd say, except not that copy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for 
really solid where's the first edition giovanni's first edition we yeah. recommend this one if you can get hold of one foundations of try and make it clear the foundations of chinese medicine of um giovanni Macioccia. unfortunately as he got older and wiser he also wrote really really huge bigger books he got bigger. so the second edition <laughs> is twice the size if you can get the first edition i recommend that it's good very, for exercise. Very clear. <laughs> but my favorite is Ted Kapchuk, The Web That Has No Weaver, but not this edition. Get the modern one. Uh, sorry, the updated one, which has got a red cover. Make sure you get the updated one. I can't remember the date of it. So I did a seminar with him in 1997 or something called The Ladder of the Soul. And that had all the spiritual stuff and all the stuff about the virtues. Yes, Karen, yeah. that's, the, that, that's the app. Manual for right. manual oh. that's, this is the book. Yeah. The um, app's a lot lighter to carry with you. <laughs> it works very well on iPad. Yes. I like it. Oh. So uh, that Ted Captured thing. So um, the ladder of the soul information with all the stuff about um, the virtues and the spiritual aspects played up and the different angle on the... Uh, on the vital substances, actually, chi were, is, can, is um, added to. It's all in the new um, edition, the updated red. Well, Martin is sharing that this book by Louise E. Flecker, Five I Spirits. Don't I don't know that one. I'll have to look up that up. Cool. Thank you, but Martin. Thanks. That's really good. Yeah, cool. Yay. Okay, we've only got a few minutes left, and we really want to tell you our latest news. You do. It's news. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're probably won't be surprised to know that we're actually videoing and creating an online course called TCM and Shiatsu right now. Um, and we're really excited <laughs> because we've managed to get Carola to come up here and Hooray. work with us. Hooray. So yeah, she's going to come up and spend a whole day with us in Ju on July the 22nd. We're going to have her in here with all the lights and the cameras, and we're going to get loads of video footage. She's going to contribute to our next online course, which is going to be uh, launched in October on October the 6th, which is, you know, um, Gonna have a break in August. We all usually have a bit of a lie down and have a bit of a holiday, so we won't. There won't be a first Tuesday uh, webinar in August, but we've got some other exciting news, which is we're going to introduce another whole completely new feature to New Energy Work. In September, we're going to be opening up and we're going to be creating a membership organisation, like a membership system. Um, and as part of that, we are planning to do virtual apprenticeship seminars and this is based on my experience with pauline i learned the most really about shiatsu uh, from her by watching her over and over again watching her do sessions so what we're going to do is we've actually invited actual real clients from the shiatsu center we're going to get them to come up here um, they've agreed to be part of it and we're going to keep it very discreet we're going to have some very low key we're going to use natural light we're just going to have a web um, just a, like a webcam uh, like a webinar and I'm going to just do an actual treatment in here like I no normally do every day of the week. And I'm going to talk my way through it and then we're going to record it. And then um, we're going to create a, like a mini like course every month. So we're going to give you theory background. You'll have a chance to ask questions uh, during the actual live event and also afterwards. Um, and we're going to do one of those every month. Um, so we're kind of very excited about that. Mm. It's going to be a whole new thing. We're going to still produce the online courses. We're going to continue to produce two new ones a year. That's the maximum we can do because it takes us about six months to produce a new one. We're going to release those and we're going to include all of this um, monthly activities, monthly virtual apprenticeship seminars and the online courses in like a membership thing. And we're going to have free student, free membership, student membership and professional membership. And we're going to explain all that and launch it on the 3rd of September, and that will give us a month to gear the whole thing up. So it's gonna be like really exciting. We're gonna have a pilot in August. We're gonna try it out, just to experiment with it. Um, but uh, yeah, we're kind of really excited about that. So we'll let you know all about that. And then if you can make the webinar on uh, the first Tuesday of September, we'll explain how the whole thing works. We'll show you clips from our trial. Um, and it's just a, something I really think will be so beautiful because there's no way I could have a hundred people in this room. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and an apprenticeship situation is such a special thing. And, but to have someone from the team in here quietly sitting in the corner with a webcam, you know, doing it means that we can make that very intimate thing and that very practical thing, you know. And how generous of your clients to agree to be. Famous. I was surprised. <laughs> I, I thought I was gonna, I just tentatively asked because I wanted a mixture of different 
things yeah. that people had wrong with them or things they were working on. And I wanted, I've got three so far. So we've got until Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I've got three so far um, to come in and, um, and be models for us. So yeah, really something I've been dreaming about doing for yeah, several yeah, years, yeah, no, but I feel idea. I really want to do it. So it'd be great if you could be part of that. And uh, that's it. We're coming up to oh my God, one hour. Fast. How did that yeah. happen? Yeah. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for being there. Have a great summer. Have a great I summer. We'll be back in September. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We've been, yeah. The time has flown past, hasn't it? There we go. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thank Lovely you for, to see you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to. I'm going to make sure I turn the webinar camera off. You know what I'm talking about. If you saw the Dan Keown's webinar, I'm going to make sure everything's turned off. And um, yeah, we'll keep you informed. We'll send you a link to the recording if, you, um, if you've been it, and we'll also send a link to the, those who missed the live event. And we'll see you in September. We'll be working on the online course for TCM and Shiatsu with Carola, and we'll be working on the virtual apprenticeship seminars. Loads of exciting stuff. Thank you very much.